name's Brian Howe, and uh, I was a Member of Parliament for Batman, uh, now the seat of Cooper, uh, between uh, 1977 and 1996, so almost uh, uh, 20 years. Australia in the post-war period went through a massive migration program, and you see that very much in Northcote, where Jaika Jaika uh, is located, and Westgarth. Uh, uh, which uh, Westgarth itself, of course, had a uh, very significant Greek and Macedonian uh, uh, population. Uh, it was a very uh, uh, multicultural area within uh, Northcote, perhaps more than some of the other parts of the uh, suburb. And so uh, it was um, uh, also pretty low income. I think a lot of people uh, there were struggling. And so the neighbourhood centre, when it was established, uh, the Jaika Jaika, was very important in giving, providing a safe place, uh, especially for women, women of uh, uh, not just Anglo-Saxon background, but women of uh, all sorts of different, uh, increasingly Asian uh, background, uh, uh, and uh, and that provided a kind of bridge for people uh, to make the transition into uh, Australian uh, Australian society. And also it provided an opportunity to meet Australian people who are long-term Australian residents. So Northcote, uh, in a way, is going through a massive uh, change in the 1980s and 1990s. And neighbourhood centres were very important because they helped to leaven the lump. They helped to make people feel at home uh, in their local, uh, local community. But also they opened up opportunities for people to become involved in all sorts of uh, interesting uh, activities sometimes in social action, anti-nuclear uh, uh, movements, uh, but also uh, uh, educational uh, educational programs and, and perhaps helping to locate themselves uh, in Australia and in the neighbourhood. The building we know as Jaika Jaika Community Centre was first built by the Reorganised Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1929 amidst the Great Depression. The church was sold to the Northcote Council in late 1970s and was used predominantly by a drama group. Jaika Jaika Community Centre became a neighbourhood house in 1983 when its constitution was created. Its first coordinator was Anna Maria Dira and it was registered as an incorporated association on 27th of March 1985. Marie Goonan was appointed Jaika Jaika Community Centre's second coordinator on 16th of June 1988. I'm not sure who was first involved in the establishment of Jaika Jaika. I know I came along a few years after Jaika had begun. So when I actually started with Jaika, they, at that time, it was, it was about 1985 or so, and I actually started coming here to join the Northcote People for Nuclear Disarmament or P&D. That was a, actually a peace group. I've been associated with JICA, JICA since not long after I moved into this area which was in the mid-1980s and I think I met Marie Goonan first who was the first then through another project and I knew that she worked here as well and came along found out what was going on and got involved in a few things. Neighbourhood houses are really there for the, 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 the local community to actually come and use so that they can actually integrate with people. So we've always had uh, here, uh, what I always think of with, with us at JICA is the community development programs that we've run in the local areas and they've always been fantastic things and to do with um, public housing in particular but also other other groups as well that come and use the centre, play groups, we've had general support groups and all those sort of things that people come along and want to do or to meet other people. What's been great about neighbourhood houses is that I think two things, um, they get, they 
organise based on the local need. People come to them and say, where can I find a, a so-and-so class or can you run a sort of something class? Or can we have a specialised... Um, we had a, they're very responsive to the local need and those change over time. Uh, and also they bring different generations together. And neighbourhood houses were first set up in Victoria, uh, from I think from anywhere in the world, the, the neighbourhood house movement kicked off in Victoria. All neighbourhood houses tended to be a, a little bit different to Jaika Jaika. We were, this neighbourhood house was a bit limited because we had nowhere for people to walk into and sit round and have a cup of tea uh, or a coffee or to chat to each other. Um, so we relied on people coming in the door and asking could we set up a program for this or a program for that. There was also funding for community development projects and the Cambodian people were recent migrants here so we had funding to have a Cambodian worker uh, work part-time at the centre. He had two days a week here and two days a week helping in the local schools as a teacher's aide. Uh, but other neighbourhood houses, particularly Thornby Women's Neighbourhood House, ran up more programs I think than we did because they had a better facility where women could drop in and stay round and talk because it was mo mostly women um, who used neighbourhood houses in those days. Uh, when I first started, so back in 85, I was actually one of the users at the time then and I had it pretty easy because I was actually just a, a general user. And I, and then after joining the committee, a bit later on, then your, the other responsibilities start to creep in to do with buildings and person and people, of course. But the, the chief things that seems to be always happening is the, the funding regulations keep changing and the people in the area keep changing as well. So you always have to keep adjusting what you're doing. Um, there was been a lot of different times where we've had huge, I think about 22 different playgroups, children's playgroups at one time. It was a big baby boom. So we had all these playgroups. And uh, at one time we had a lot of art classes and the emphasis has changed now and it's other type of facilities here. We have now more, more singing and dancing and musical instruments as well. Um, in way of the funding, I'll have to go back to that because speaking from the committee type, influence, there's so much more regulation that you have to go through. So more, so much more paperwork. And in the past, there was more freedom to actually do different activities that you'd have an idea and you start carrying it through, whereas nowadays you have, you've got to actually be a bit more careful. I didn't realise that that the place was staffed by anybody. There didn't seem to be very many changes and there were signs written up, don't touch this and don't do that, and it wasn't very welcoming. Well, I think I began, I started that to make it welcome as best I could uh, with, with not as, not as open as some people, but yeah, I made people as welcome as possible and I tidied the place up and I took down the unpleasant signs and I uh, tried my best to decorate the place up and was always welcoming and learned people's names and learned to greet everybody and uh, so on so that I started it and I think other people have just simply continued at it and got better at it as the society itself has sort of relaxed and got a bit more 
welcoming and affirming than we were 30 years ago. The Greek women's group started when they approached Joka Joka Community Centre looking for a place to gather in the late 80s and they continue to meet every Monday at the centre sharing stories, advice, recipes and laughs without their husbands. Hello, my name is Anna Matthews and every Monday we come here to Jaga Jaga with other ladies and we have coffee together, we talk about everything. When they first start, uh, the group started, it was 30 years ago and the ladies who come here, they come to uh, learn English, um, they learn how to sew, um, computers, dancing and uh, cooking. Uh, what do I remember? One of the things I remember the most that you see of Jaika, it, actually it's it's probably not uh, with Jaika. I was with uh, the Peace Network at the time and there was the, to do with the Gulf War and there was, there was uh, huge demonstrations in the streets and we actually, as a, as a local peace group, organised a huge uh, workshop, seminar, recruitment drive, uh, active, activist group session at the town hall at Northcote. And something like, it must have been, I think, 500 people showed up. And it was huge. And uh, I was so nervous. <laughs> I was petrified. I remember I got, up, I got up to talk and I wasn't expecting that many, so it's always interesting. And I think that's the... the, the, the I think because I was so scared. <laughs> That's the event that I remember the most. <laughs> well, I can tell you one that taught us a lesson. Um, we've had a policy most of the time that I was involved, I'm not sure that they still have, of having the hall available for community activities. And I've talked a few about going to um, a friend's child's first birthday party, going to political you know, candidates meetings and things. We, we did have a few um, nighttime arrangements when uh, we uh, we let out the hall for a you know an 18th birthday or something like that and it was an 18th birthday that stays in my memory because it turned into a disaster when we got this request and uh, we followed up all the, all the protocols and we got the person to sign up off or that she understood all the thing and she would have security in this. And the kids went a bit wild and they caused a bit of damage, including damage to our not particularly valuable but much loved piano and some damage out in the street and uh, it made us change our policies very quickly. I think what I found was, that was rewarding for me was that people would say Oh, I love being here. Oh, I'm so glad I can come to Jaika. Yes. The place we meet all together and uh, we can see other cultures here. Japanese ladies with the grandkids, with the kids. And, uh, I think it's place for everybody. Feel well every time I come here, every Monday, I can't wait to come here. I feel beautiful because I see my friends. They are my friends. It doesn't matter if we don't see each other every day. They are friends. They are, they are my friends. And we come here to see each other, to have the coffee and everything else. It's been a lot of things for me. It's been a, um, a resource, a place that I knew I could get involved in something or ask a question and one of the wonderful things about this neighbourhood house and I guess most of them is that they have, they're so well grounded in their community that they know what's going on and if it's not happening here and you want to be part of something, they can tell you where to go. 
um, they, they have access to lots of information through council and things like that. Um, so it's been a um, a way into the into the local community because when I first came here, I'd never lived in this part of the world before. Like it gave me a way into my own community, which has been my own community for over thirty years. So, um, and I just enjoyed being here. Um, it's, I, at the moment, I would have to say, um, Jenny and I would, it's Jenny and the, and the community community development work, Gina with her exciting projects that she has, and the dragon <laughs> out in the courtyard is, is a beautiful little piece, but also just the, the, the wisteria and the green building itself. I think for me now it's an important place in the community and it's a place where if I've got friends in, in some who need to do something because they haven't got a job or uh, they're looking for a new activity, I can say to them, well, you know, try the local community centres, try JICA. Uh, I think it's just a place for people. Wonderful. Have a quick look again for a second. <laughs> oh, oh, I have to have that one. I thank, I thank God for Jaga Jaga. And uh, if if one day they tell us not to come anymore, I'm going to be very upset.